damn it. Shit. Ah, God damn it. I just looked at my analytics and I saw that only 10% of you are subscribed. What the hell do I have to do to get you guys to subscribe? Do it! Anyways, here we go. Let's talk about colleges and which ones are actually worth it. What's happening? It's Shane here. So chances are, if you clicked on this video, you're interested in knowing if your college or college you're looking at is a good deal. So as we know, many colleges out there are ridiculously overpriced and you're gonna end up paying off your student loans for 20, 30, 40 years before you finally get out of debt. That's a really bad deal. A much better deal, in my opinion, is to always remember within the first 10 seconds of the video to always tap like just because it helps with the YouTube algorithm algorithm and I really appreciate it. And I've talked about this a lot before, but it's almost always a good idea to save as much money as you can when it comes to going into a college. The average student is graduating with thirty dollars to $40,000 of debt, and by the time you pay it off, sometimes it's actually double that. So in this video, I'm going to go over some colleges that are really good value deals, and I'm also going to go over how you can find the best value college for your specific situation. Number 10 on the list is going to be Baruch College, and I know I'm probably saying that wrong. It's probably like Barush or something like that, but the average net cost of Baruch is going to be around $11,473. Now Baruch is a college in New York City so it has a really nice prime location and a lot of the other colleges in New York City cost ridiculous amount of money and so it's really refreshing to see one that is actually a decent deal. So for the alumni that graduate from this college after 10 years they're making somewhere around $107,000 a year on average and that's the average of all of the different degrees combined so that's actually really good. Number nine on the list is going to be UCLA or the University of California in Los Angeles. So the average net cost of this university is going to be somewhere around $12,400. This is another one where it's really nice to see in a really expensive city like Los Angeles that there's a university that doesn't cost as much money. Now we see that alumni with over 10 years of experience are earning about $118,500 on average. I should note here with this one as well as the last one that people who live in New York and Los Angeles, even if they make more, their take-home pay is probably going to be a little bit less just because the cost of living is so high. And so if you're making hundred thousand dollars a year in New York that's actually not that impressive compared to making hundred thousand dollars a year in Texas or Louisiana so just keep that in mind when you're looking at this list this next one isn't necessarily in a state that has a really high cost of living and that's Michigan Technological University now the average net cost with this one is going to be around twelve thousand dollars and alumni with over ten years of experience are going to be making around hundred and ten thousand dollars a year now one thing that you see over and over again is universities that concentrate on specific subjects that tend to pay a lot higher are universities that tend to be better deals. MTU, Michigan Technological University, is a perfect example of this. They concentrate on a lot of degrees that are going to lead to you getting a really good career where you're making a good amount of money. And so I wasn't surprised to see that one on the list. The $110,000 salary after 10 years is also quite a bit of money, especially in a state like Michigan. Number seven on the list is going to be the College of William and Mary. Now it costs on average about $11,320. Alumni are going to be making around $100,000 $113,600 after 10 years of experience. And this one is located in Virginia, so it's kind of in the middle, I guess you could say. There's some parts of Virginia that are really expensive and there's some parts that aren't. But overall, this one is a pretty good deal. Next one on the list is going to be Purdue University in West Lafayette. And no, that's not gonna be Lafayette, Louisiana. That's actually Lafayette, Indiana. Now the average cost is gonna be around 10,800 a year and the median salary for alumni with over 10 years of experience is gonna be $105,800. Now, as you can imagine, that one. 105,000 goes a long ways, especially in Indiana. And so that is a very nice salary for just everybody who graduates from the university to have. Number five on the list is going to be the Georgia Institute of Technology. And this is another one that focuses on technology. The average cost is gonna be somewhere around $12,200 a year. And the median salary for alumni with 10 years of experience is gonna be somewhere around 131,000 a year. Now, obviously that median salary is extremely high, one of the highest on the entire list. And again, the reason for that is because they generally stick to the degrees that only pay really well. Now, additionally, having a salary like that, 131,000 a year, is gonna be really good in a state like Georgia where the cost of living isn't that high. Number four on the list is going to be the University of Michigan at Ann Arbor, and this is one of the most popular universities in the entire country. It's also a really good deal because the average net cost is gonna be somewhere around $10,000 a year. And for that, the median salary of alumni with over 10 years of experience 
points is gonna be 107,900. That is really good, especially considering the fact that Michigan is one of the best public universities in terms of your education. It's one of the most popular universities, so you're gonna have a huge network. On top of that, Michigan is not a state where it costs that much to live. And so this one overall is just a very good choice and I would encourage you to look into it. Number three on the list is going to be Massachusetts Maritime Academy. Now this is a public college in Massachusetts and they focus mostly on maritime related activities. So basically degrees that have to do with the sea or the ocean. The average net cost to attend is somewhere around $10,200. And the median salary for an alumni with over 10 years of experience is an amazing $114,600 a year. Number two on the list is going to be the University of Washington at Bothell. Now this one is actually a satellite university of the normal University of Washington which is located in Seattle. The average cost to attend is going to be somewhere around $8,700 a year which is pretty low compared to all the other ones on the list. For that the median salary is going to be somewhere around $104,000 a year which is extremely good especially considering you're living in a state like Washington where the cost of living isn't very low and then on top of that Washington doesn't have any state income tax. So it's no surprise that the number one on the list is going to be the other University of Washington, the one that's located in Seattle. The stats for this one are almost the same. The tuition is just a couple hundred dollars more, but you are going to make quite a bit more, $111,800 a year compared to the $104,000 from the University of Bothell. The discrepancy is probably due to the high cost of living in Seattle and the fact that there's a lot of technology and high paying jobs in that area. Now, if you're thinking about attending a specific university and you're wondering whether whether it's a good deal or not, what I recommend doing is looking into the tuition tracker. And there's a really important reason for this. You might think that you can just look up the price of a university online. I mean, they do all have that posted on their website, but there's a huge difference between what's known as the sticker price, which is what they have posted on their website, and what students actually pay. So for the purposes of this video, I just had it as the median income bracket. So people who make around $48,000 to $75,000 a year, or rather their family makes that much, but different universities are going to vary a lot depending on how many scholarships they offer, what kind of assistance they offer, the grants they offer, um, how much your family makes. They'll, they can adjust the tuition based on that. There's so many different variables, so the sticker price and the actual price are often way different. There are some colleges that won't help you out at all, and so the sticker price is the entire price of the college itself. There are other colleges where they might have a sticker price of $20,000 a year, and you end up only paying about $8,000. This is a hugely confusing process and that's why it's so important that you do your research up front and you look both of them up so that you can compare them. This is a tool that will also give you the retention rates of different schools, which is basically how many of the students that started off actually ended up finishing their entire degree at that school. This is generally considered to be a very good indicator of the quality of the school itself. For instance, the number one on this list, the University of Washington has a 94% retention rate and that 94% retention rate is well above the national average. Now, I've talked about this a lot before, but I am a huge fan of going to a community college for the first two years and then transferring those credits that you got from the community college to a state school. Out of the four big options, community college, state school, nonprofit, and for-profit universities, those two, the first ones, are by far the cheapest. And out of those two, community college is of course going to be cheaper. And a lot of the time, community colleges actually give better education, in my opinion, than state schools and public and private colleges. The reason for this is because the class size is generally a lot smaller, and the professors at community colleges are professors first. Whereas a lot of the time at state schools and private schools, the professors are researchers first and professors second. So just as an example, my first year in college, and I'm not you know, trying to talk crap on my college, I feel like a lot of them are like this. A lot of my lectures were like 300 people and I did not feel like I was getting a very good education. A lot of the time they would just read off of the slides. Now, if you do decide to go to the community college route to save some money, which you will save a ton of money if you do that, you do need to make sure that the state school that you're planning on going to accepts the credits from that community college and that is a very important important step in the process. Another thing that you can do to save money on this whole entire process is to actually just finish your degree early. Now this is an option if you're taking one of the easier degrees. I'm just not going to sugarcoat it at all. Some of the degrees are a lot easier than others. This might not be an option for you, for instance, if you're taking engineering or computer science. In fact, you might have trouble finishing it in four years and you might have to take an extra year. But if you're taking an easier degree, I know a lot of people who have finished them in two and a half, sometimes three or three and a half years, and that saves a ton of money. On top of this, you want 
want to look into scholarships, grants, essay writing contests, and all that sort of thing. I've already made entire videos about this, so you can check out my channel if you want to see those. And a lot of people, when they go to college, they just think that their student loans are this magical, you know, cornucopia of loans, and you're never going to have to actually pay that money off. And that's just not the case. And that's why so many people fall for this trap. But luckily for you, if you're watching this now, you haven't started college yet, you can plan ahead and make sure that you make good financial decisions. Check out my other videos right here. I made them just for you. Go ahead, smash the like button, hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell, and then comment below any comments, thoughts, criticisms, etc. that you have on the video. Thank you so much for watching and bye for now.